hey everyone welcome back to my video so in this video we will be discussing about servers and events ssc so what is ssc like the name says servers and event is a technology that allows the server to push new updates to the browser so it's a it's an http based technology that you know makes communication between a browser a client and server much more easier especially in the case of real-time applications that needs you know real-time communication between the server and the client to exchange uh, data so to understand why ssc is needed you should understand the limitations of the of the traditional request response model of http protocol the hypertext transfer protocol that is you know being used today by the way ssc is not different from uh, HTTP it's it's a, it's actually a feature that is built on top of the HTTP protocol itself it's not a entirely new protocol by itself let's look at the traditional request response model through which the HTTP protocol works so you have a client that means the browser and you have a server and when the client wants something from the server it has to send a request in the form of HTTP uh, to the server, right? So uh, HTTP works on top of TCP protocol. So so what the browser does is it 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 knows the HTTP specification, right? So browser creates the HTTP response in the right format as defined in the HTTP specification, and sends that request to the server through the network so it's sent as tcp packets and the server receives receives these tcp packets and try to you know recreate the original http request that was sent by the client so now the server knows yeah the the, the client the browser requested for a particular html file let's say index.html file and now the server can fetch the file or construct the file and send it back to the client back to the browser as the HTTP response. So again, the server knows how to construct the HTTP response because it is defined in the HTTP specification, right? So the server sends back the data to the client through the same TCP connection that was opened by the browser. The, the browser receives the response in the HTTP format and then when it reads the response, it gets the content of the index.html file which was requested and it renders the index.html file to the browser that's it and as soon as the request is completely received by the browser it, it closes the connection so the tcp connection is closed so what is the problem here what if the index.html file changes in the in the in the backend so there is no way for the server to push you new updates when there is a change that has happened on the server side the the browser needs to request for new changes whenever required because it's a pull based model right unless the browser in you know initiates a request to the server asking for new updates the server cannot send it so this is the limitation of the request response model so where is this going to be a problem think about real time applications where your front end needs to <clears throat> show real-time updates from the server for example if you're building a tracking application that shows the location of your delivery agent in a real-time map so the map needs to be updated whenever there is a new location update for the driver right so in the traditional request response model the browser needs to send requests to the server every five seconds or every two seconds asking for the server like hey do you do you have any updates for the location and the server is like uh yeah if there is a new location available then it sends back the res response to the client and if there is no new response so let's like, say like hey i don't have any new update at the moment but keep asking me again i might have some new updates after some time but unless you ask for it i cannot give it to you this is the problem so imagine when there are millions of clients 
millions of browsers connected to a particular server and all of them are asking for the location or the status update of a, of a, of a progress bar. Server is getting overwhelmed with all these requests. That is enough to bring down the server. If the server cannot handle all these requests, you will simply crash the server because for every request, it's a new TCP connection. So for the operating system kernel, initiating a new TCP connection is a complicated process. So this is where SSC comes into help. Because with server sent events, the server and the client can keep an open connection in between, keep an open TCP connection in between. So the server can send new updates back to the client, even if the client is not requesting for it. So imagine the same scenario where uh, we are building a progress bar on the front end. So there is some activity happening in the back end and the user is watching your website for the real time progress update, you know, through a progress bar. So whenever there is a new update regarding the progress, the server should be able to send that progress to the client without the client to request for it. So that's what SSE is. So let's see how this works. So initially the browser, the client sends, sends an HTTP request to the server asking for the progress update. Then the server says that, okay, I received this request, but keep the connection alive. Don't close this connection because I will send you new updates through the same connection whenever I have a new update, right? So you can avoid bombarding the server with multiple HTTP requests and there is no overhead of opening and accepting the connection on both the client side and the server side. It's just an open connection, that's it. As I'm explaining the server sent events, you might be thinking like, hey, this is what a WebSocket also is, right? Yeah, you, you are right because both server sent event and WebSocket is built for real-time communication between the server and the client. But there are some differences between an SSE and a WebSocket technology. Let's let's look into those differences. The first difference is in the protocol itself. Like I said, SSE is not a new protocol altogether. It's just HTTP. It's just a feature of HTTP that allows the server to keep the connection alive and push new updates to the server. And the client, the, the client, that means the browser or the HTTP client has this new API called the event source API that allows the client to read the incoming streams of data through the open connection. But in the case of WebSocket, it's, it's a new protocol. So the problem is that if you are communicating with a client that doesn't understand this WebSocket protocol, then you cannot make a connection. So both of them allow real-time communication between a server and, and the browser, the client. But SSC is unidirectional. That means you can only communicate from a server to the client and the client cannot respond back to the server through the same SSC connection. That's the limitation of server sent events. But in the case of WebSocket, it supports bidirectional communication. It's a full duplex bidirectional communication channel. That means both the server and the client can exchange data. Then next is regarding the reconnection. What happens if the connection is lost? SSE has built in reconnection mechanism. The browser knows how to reconnect. So you don't have to do anything from your source code on the front end. You don't have to implement the reconnection mechanism because that is handled by the browser itself. Then about the data type support. WebSocket allows you to stream both text data and binary data. For example, if you want to send a file, you can directly send the file through a WebSocket in its binary form itself. But in the case of SSC, it's a text-based protocol. You cannot send binary data through an SSC connection. UTF-8 encoded text data that you can send through SSC, but WebSocket supports, you know, multiple data types like binary. So you can simply send some uh, blocks of bytes directly through WebSocket. So the next thing is regarding the connection limit. See, whenever you open an SSC connection from a browser to a server, uh, the browser creates a new TCP connection with the web server. 
So if you have multiple SSE connections within the same front-end application, for every SSE event source that you create from, uh, you know, from your client, a new TCP connection is open. So it's a, it's a dedicated TCP connection just held for the purpose of that, you know, that um, SSE connection. But this is a problem because browsers often have a limit in, in the number of maximum number of TCP connections it can establish to the same destination server. So probably it's it's six or eight. So if you have multiple SSE connections in the same application, uh, you, you are going to be limited by the number of maximum SSE connections that you can open from your source code. It's, it's either six or eight. But in the case of WebSocket, there is no such limitation. But I believe there there are some limitations, but the but the limit the number is much larger than six or eight. But this problem applies only if you are using HTTP 1.1 and not HTTP 2.0, because HTTP 2.0 supports you know multiplexing of uh, different streams within a single TCP connection. So even if you have two or three SSE connections within the same uh, front end app. The browser will open only one dedicated TCP connection and multiplex all these three different streams in that single connection. So now let's do some coding to understand how SSE works. So we are going to build a simple app to demonstrate the working of servers and events. So we have two parts, the front end app and the back end event source. So on the front end, we will be creating a progress bar, you know, that displays the real-time progress of a task that is being performed in the back end so let's add the progress bar component let's set the initial value to zero and maximum 300 okay now we have simply added now we have added a progress bar to our printed app task in progress okay now yeah so this is our simple progress bar application let's try updating the value to let's say 40 and what happens yeah so if we have a method to, to update the value in real time we can simply make this app work so how can we do that so let's go to our node.js server so i have created a simple express.js application here and the app, uh, the server listens on port 3000. So let's add an endpoint here. Get progress request response. All right. So this is the endpoint, you know, the front end app will connect to, to, to get the real time progress updates. So usually when we develop an HTTP based endpoint, what we do is like, we will simply, um, return the status code along with some some data let's say okay okay now the server has started on port 3000 let's go back open a new tab and see what happens when you type yeah so currently it simply returns 200 status and okay body and it simply closes the connection nothing else so we are going to make this an SSE endpoint. So for that, the first thing that you have to do is like return this the content type of this particular request as text bar event stream. So this is a specific content type that should be used to tell the browser that um, the server is going to return a stream of data instead of just a plain document or something like that. Now let's send some data. We'll use the response.write function. And the data should be in this particular format, data colon followed by a space, add some data. And make sure to add two new lines at the end of the data. Let's reload the server and okay. So we received the data and also at the same time, you can see that the connection has not yet closed. It's kept alive for new data to come, but in our code, we don't have any new data to arrive, but the browser won't close this connection. So this is the magic of servers and events. Now let's go back to our source code and 
simulate a stream of uh, progress update data so how can we do that let's say let's let's define a variable called progress and initialize it to zero and inside a interval set interval function we can write a function that will be called every like 800 milliseconds interval okay now instead of sending the data here we can send the data here in a JSON format okay so we are going to change this to a JSON format JSON will have the progress key and now we we are returning a JSON let's see what happens now okay now you can see that it simulates the stream of progress data from the server so we can enhance the script a bit by incrementing the progress by 10 now we can see that the, the value of the progress gets updated with each stream now let's go back to the client code in the head section we are going to write the event source script so let's initialize the event source connection first let's say const event source equals we'll use the event source interface let's connect to our event source server which is um yeah which is available here and we have the event source object now we need to attach a handler on message equals we'll get the message here so we know that we have we are supplying a JSON string here so we have to parse the JSON here so let's say const data equals JSON dot parse message dot data so simply we can just console the data so you can see what's happening yeah you can see that you can see the real-time event stream on your console now let's do the magic of updating the progress bar with this value so we'll say document dot get element by id progress dot value equals data dot progress okay now let's see what's gonna happen see you can see the progress bar getting updated in real time if you look at the network tab here on the console you can see that yeah there is an open connection to the progress endpoint and the event stream is being received so this is how the ssc works but you can see that the you know even after receiving the complete progress update the event stream continues to you know send more events because we haven't handled that particular logic on the server side on the server side so after sending the progress let's check if the progress has crossed 100 then we need to you know clear this particular interval so for that we need to set an interval id here We'll use the clear interval function with the interval ID. Just return. And also, uh, you know, we should send the status code as 204. That means no, no more content is available. Okay, now we'll just restart the server. And let's see what's going to happen. Just, yeah. Let's see if the progress bar. So after receiving 100 you know progress event the server has closed its connection so that how it works so i think you have understood what server and event is it's actually really helpful in building real-time applications like you know real-time maps tracking progress updates real-time notifications and you know, things like that so thanks for watching bye bye